Hello again. Welcome to the third video in the ME analysis series. Here is another factor that helped the figures produced by PACE give a better impression than was actually the case. Hello Joe, how are you doing? Hello Doctor. I'm not so good at the moment. Things are getting to be quite a struggle. Yes, I can see that. You do look very ill. Look, here's a questionnaire that I would like you to fill out for me. It measures the severity of how ill you feel you are. Could you just pop out and complete it for me? Here you are, Doctor. Well, Joe, you've scored very low marks indeed on this assessment. It is obvious that you are really struggling to cope, but I think I have something here that will help. It is a therapy that comes highly recommended. Now, you do realise, Joe, that lots of people feel tired and have aches and pains in their lives, like you do. It's very common and quite natural. Actually, a big part of the problem is that you think a lot about how ill you are, and that makes you think that it is worse than it is. You aren't really as ill as you think you are. If you focus less on it, you will feel a lot better. Trust me on this. We have helped a lot of people like you to recover. Now, Joe, I'd just like you to pop out and fill in this questionnaire again about how ill you feel you are. Here you are, Doctor. Well, Joe, I'm really pleased to tell you that the therapy really has worked well. Your marks have shot up by a clear seven points, and that is a really significant improvement. You clearly don't feel that you are as ill as you said you were before this treatment, and really are on the way to recovery. I think that's enough for today. I see you've left your electric scooter outside. Can you manage to get to it okay, or would you like one of the nurses to help you? So let's look at the actual results. Here is a typical patient in the group that only had five sessions of specialist medical care. And here is one in the group that saw the specialist three times, but also had a further 14 sessions of CBT. We will look at their physical function, the SF36 scores. Both patients started off with a score of 39. Remember that the authors of the trial expected the score of the typical CBT patient to improve to 75 or more. By the end of the study, both scores had improved. The SMC1 to 51, and the one with 14 additional sessions of CBT to 58. It is that tiny pink cone of difference that all the claims and fuss is about. That small difference is how the authors of the PACE trial persuaded NICE that giving everybody with ME sessions of CBT or graded exercise was worthwhile. But, both CBT and graded exercise took strong assertive lines about recovery and the perception of illness, which could easily have influenced the way in which patients completed their questionnaires. How much of that little pink cone of difference was due to patients being told time and time again that they were not as ill as they thought they were? Experimental bias like this is quite common in scientific studies, and normally scientists use two techniques to decide how big the effect could be. One way is to have a control group. In the PACE study, this could have been a group that had, say, 14 sessions of relaxation classes, delivered in an equally confident and assertive way. Then it would be the difference between these results and those of the CBT or graded exercise groups that actually measured the effect of these therapies. But despite all their experience, the PACE team decided not to have a control group. The other way is to introduce some form of hard or objective evidence to compare with the subjective questionnaire results. When the PACE team first applied for a grant, they proposed to fit patients with an actometer, a pedometer, that actually measured their activity levels over a period of time. This was a sensible alternative to having a control group, and they were funded for this. Then they decided to add several more assessments. Later, deciding that there were now too many assessments for the patients to manage, they decided to drop the principal objective assessment, 
the important one using actometers. It wouldn't have mattered so much if the improvements were as strong as expected, as stated in their application for a grant. But they weren't. They were very weak. And this could easily have just been the effect of bias. In fact, there have been other studies using actometers and questionnaires in circumstances like these, and these have found that there was no hard evidence in the activity levels of patients to support the slightly improved marks in the questionnaires. So tell me, do you think that that tiny pink cone of difference justifies sending people with extreme fatigue on 14 sessions of therapy spread over six months, bearing in mind that the claimed improvement could just be that the patients ticked the boxes differently in response to being assured that they were not as ill as they supposed. 